Python tutorial support vector machine regression. Algorithm learning consists of algorithm training within training data subset for optimal parameters estimation and algorithm testing within testing data subset using previously optimized parameters. This corresponds to a supervised regression machine learning task. This topic is part of machine training analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of training or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Support Vector Machine consists of supervised boundary-based learning algorithm for predicting output target feature by separating output target and input predictor features data into optimal hyperplanes. Output target prediction error regularization and time series cross-validation are used for lower invariance error search generated by a greater model complexity. For full reference, I recommend that you read Harris Drucker, Christopher Burgess, Linda Kaufman, Alexander Smola, and Vladimir Babnik support vector regression machines published by MIT Press in 1997. Support vector machines have the following characteristics. A kernel function, which transforms output target and input predictor features data into higher dimensional feature space to perform linear separation in optimal hyperplanes. For support vector machines, linear, polynomial, Gaussian radial basis, or hyperbolic tangent sigmoid functions are used. As a formula, here we have the example of a linear kernel which is equal to the sum from the first to the last of input predictor's data multiplied by output target feature data. Quadratic programming, which consists of finding optimal output target feature prediction error penalization coefficient by maximizing separation between output target and input predictor features data support vectors subject to a tolerance margin. As a formula, the minimization objective is equal to 1 divided by 2 multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the support vector's margin width to the power of 2 plus an output target prediction error penalization coefficient multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature prediction error or distance out of margins plus an output target feature prediction error tolerance margin. Great. So let's go back into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study support vector machine regression with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. The first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import NumPy SMP, Pandas SPD. From scikit-learn, we're going to import SVM as ML for our machine learning algorithm. Then we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot.splt. The next step is to create the data for this tutorial, which will be done through data reading. So we create the variable named SPY, which is equal to pd or pandas.read underscore csv. Then we have the path to the data file, which is stored within the data directory and its name as support back to machine regression data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separate values. Index column as date, and we'll parse those dates as true. So let's go into the data file. Within it, as mentioned, we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. We have two columns of data, dates and SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the standard Poor's 500 index, and adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Notice that we have data with a daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore nine years of data. So let's go back into the code file. And once we've read the data, now we're going to proceed to create target and predictor features. Within this tutorial, as an example for educational purposes, we'll be using as target feature current day returns. So we'll create this barbel rspy equals to spy.pct underscore change one position. This will calculate the daily arithmetic rate of return. We rename its columns with the variable name rspy. 
then we're also creating for educational purposes as an example the predictor feature which is going to be rspy1 equals to rspy that shift one position or previous days returns. We also rename its columns with the barbell name rspy1. And then we're going to create a data frame which is going to include both of this. We're going to name it rspy all and it's initially equal to rspy and then we join rspy1 and last step is we're going to remove any rows with non-availables with drop na. The next step is to the limit training and testing ranges within this data. Training range is commonly used for optimal parameters estimation, while testing range is commonly used for forecasting accuracy evaluation. So within this tutorial, we're going to name training range RSPYT, testing range RSPYF. So training range is going to be from RSPY all, we're going to select from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the beginning of 2014, therefore the first seven years of data. For the testing range, we're going to select from the beginning of 2014 all the way to the beginning of 2016, therefore the last two years of data. Notice that these corresponding lengths were only included also for educational purposes and can be modified according to your needs. So now that we have our data ready, we can continue with support vector machine regression. In this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So the first step is to do support vector machine regression fitting. So we create this variable SVMT because we're working within the training range. We'll be using ML feature from scikit-learn and its .sbr function for support vector machine regression. The kernel we'll be using is a linear one with C equals to 1 and epsilon equals to 0.1. C corresponds to the output target prediction error penalization coefficient, while epsilon corresponds to the output target feature prediction error tolerance margin. Notice that both of these were only included for educational purposes and can also be modified according to your needs. And then we're going to fit this corresponding support vector machine regression. First, we have those predictor features, but notice that as we have only one predictor feature, we need to reshape it. And we do so with numpy.array, and we're going to select from RSPYT or the train range, we're going to select RSPY1, which is the predictor feature. We reshape it with this corresponding dimensions, minus 1, comma 1. And then we have the target feature, also from RSPYT or train range, but in this case, selecting RSPY1 or the target feature. Next step is we're going to calculate fitted values for the support vector machine regression within the train range by creating a new variable, SBMT, FB, FV for fitted values. From a previously fitted model, SBMT, we do so with dot predict, and again, we're including that predictor feature data within the train range. As we have only one predictor feature, we need to reshape it as we did it above. So we do so with numpy.array and we are going to select from RSPYT or the train range, we select RSPY1, which is the predictor feature, and again we reshape it with the dimensions minus 1, 1. And the last step is we're going to convert this data into a pandas data frame. So we do so with PD or pandas.dataframe, capital D, capital F, of the previously calculated data, and we set its index with set underscore index as the one within the train range with, with rspyt.index. And the last step here is we're going to visualize both of these calculations within a chart. So notice here that we have the support vector machine regression chart. So first of all, we're going to do a scatter chart with plt.scatter, and it's going to have as x, which is the horizontal axis, the predictor feature. So we have rspyt, and we select rspy1 comma y, which is the vertical axis, and we're going to have the target feature, rspyt, and we're going to select from that training range, rspy. And we're going to add a second scatter, in which it's going to have exactly the same horizontal axis, or as x-axis, as rspyt, and specifically we're going to select rspy1, which is the predictor feature, but in this case for y, or the vertical axis, it's going to have those support vector machine regression fitted values, the ones we calculated above. We have the title of this chart, which is support vector machine regression chart, and then we have the corresponding Y label, that's the vertical axis label, as RSPY, or the target feature, and then we have X label, or the horizontal axis, as RSPY1, which is the predictor feature, and then we show the chart. Excellent. So let's go ahead and run this code file. As I've done it before recording this video tutorial, the name's already stored here, so I just go ahead and click run. 
Perfect. So this opens the running console and will briefly visualize the corresponding chart. So there we have the support vector machine regression chart. As mentioned previously, on the vertical axis, we have RSPY, which is the target feature. On the horizontal one, we have RSPY1, which is a predictor feature. The first scatter is the one colored in blue, which describes the relationship between RSPY and RSPY1 with those blue color dots. And then we have the second scatter, which is the one with the orange color dots. That corresponds to the support vector machine regression fitted values, all of this within the training range. Excellent. So now that we finished studying support vector machine regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.